Hello there. My name is Eric Sullivan. I am a math and data science professor at Carroll. Uh, I am likely either the professor that you're taking a class from or at least one of the other professors in the department. And what I'm going to do in this video series, uh, this is the first of several, uh, what I'm going to do in this series is give you an introduction to writing computer code in Python. So let's get started with kind of the basic question. What is Python and why should we learn to code as part of learning math? So Python first and foremost is a general purpose programming language. So programming language is the way that you're going to interface between your brain and the computer. You actually want to have the computer doing things for you. No, the computer is not just a device for going to Twitter and shopping online. It is actually a tool that does computation and math at its root has computation in it. Uh, so Python is one of these general purpose languages that allows you to interface with the computer. Now, other languages include things like um, MATLAB, oops, C, I'll even put Microsoft Excel here. There's some computer programming languages, languages that are behind the scenes there. There's Java, there's JavaScript, there's HTML, there's all sorts of other types of programming languages and all of them are kind of designed to do different things. So for our purposes, we're gonna use a language that is general purpose, uh, the Python is one of those, and it allows us to do math in a pretty streamlined way. Now, you're going to do this throughout all of your math classes. You're going to use actually some of these things like Excel, uh, Python, maybe HTML, maybe Java, throughout all of these classes so that you can get the math into the computer and it can be done efficiently. So why do you want to do that? You might be coming to this math class or you might be encountering this video as a person who has only ever done math with a calculator. That's perfectly fine. That's where a lot of people are coming out of high school, coming into college. Well, okay, so some big picture reasons for why you would want to program. First of all, I mean, these, these are big picture reasons. They're not meant to be super concrete. Modern science and math is not done with a calculator. You have to actually leave the calculator behind. One of the big reasons for that is that every computation you do in your calculator is a throwaway computation. It's hard to get back to it at some point in the future and redo that computation in some sort of meaningful way. Yeah, I know they've got a history that you can scroll through, but that's not what I mean. I mean, saving files, being able to run large batches of computations. Modern science is complicated. Modern math is complicated you need a tool that can actually deal with that complexity. Now, another reason is that programming allows, us, allows you to actually be creative as a scientist. And I say scientists here, you know, thinking mathematician, physicist, engineer, computer scientist, biologist, chemist, um, environmental scientist, anybody like that um, who is doing work with a little bit of computation, statistical analysis, things like that, you actually get to use the programming language as a sandbox to explore and play. And now really, this has been said for the last almost 15 years, programming in its many forms, everything from the basics of Excel to things that are very complicated, like maybe some really high-end software development with MATLAB or Python, is a form of modern literacy. So you, you probably have had at one point in your life a need to understand or you've been told maybe that you need to learn a new language. Well, learning how to program is just like that. In order to really be a scientist in the modern world, you need to have some basic literacy in the language of programming. Okay, so some more concrete reasons that we're gonna use for why we would want to learn how to code. One is efficiency. If you're doing a problem that requires really complicated um, computations, chances are you don't want to do those computations by hand because by hand we are very error prone. We're error prone in programming too, but we can actually check those things. We can catch it a lot faster. Furthermore, once you have something programmed, you can run it very quickly. And so it doesn't take nearly as long to actually do the math. 
Uh, next is creativity. You can discover more creative and unique solutions when you have a program or a programming environment interface that you can work with. Third on my list here is practicality. Some mathematical, uh, I'm even hedge on some, I maybe even say most modern mathematical and scientific problems are really, really hard to do by hand. But there are quick algorithms and packages built into tools like Python that allows us to solve these problems quickly. And then workflow is the biggest one uh, here at the very end that is gonna be new for everybody. If you've been working with a, a calculator, the moment you turn your calculator off, whatever computations you had done are gone. But when you're writing programs, you can just fire up the programming environment again and your work is still there and you can continue working. You can find errors, you can rework things, you can go back, save it as a new version and try a new approach to a problem. The workflow that having some programming background allows really gives you much more flexibility as a scientist and a mathematician. So what I'm hoping is that this list that I've given you here is a good reason for why we would want to learn something like Python as a general purpose programming language and why we want to learn to program in general in conjunction with our math classes.